So now that we've checked that this is a good instrument, or we're pretending it is, um, we can finally go to step four, which is where we actually calculate the two stage least squares estimate of the program on the outcome, which means we have to use the instrument to predict the program. Then we generate predictions, or program hat, and then we use the exogenous part of the program to predict the outcome, and that is the causal effect. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to our studio, and we will do this. So we'll make a second level heading here called um, to stage least squares. And if we look at our table of contents, this lines up with check assumptions, because that was like parts one through three. Now this is the last part here with two stage least squares. Um, and here we go. Actually, I'm going to save this document. I haven't done that yet. Um, so just for safety's sake, we're going to save this as IV fun stuff. And just for fun, I'm going to knit the document. So I'm going to press Command Shift K. You could also just click on the knit button, or if you're on Windows, Control Shift K for knitting. And so if we look at the console, what this is doing is it's going through and running each of the chunks sequentially, and then it's going to um, make a markdown file and then convert that to an HTML file. So we can see kind of how our document is coming along here. Um, and neat. So here's our first level heading, education and wage is fake. We're checking assumptions. Here's all the relevancy stuff. Here's the picture we made. Here's the exclusion stuff. Here's the picture we made. This is us saying it really is exclusive. Trust us. It really is exogenous. Trust us. And now we're ready for two stage least squares. Um, one thing I would change here, um, it would be nice to have a table of contents up at the top so we could jump around to different sections. So to do that, I can never remember the syntax for it. You change something here in the metadata. Um, but what I like to do is you just click on this gear icon and then go to output options. And then here for HTML, we can say include table of contents. And then if I click on OK, now it has this TOC yes thing for HTML documents. So now if we knit it, it will do the same thing. It's going to run all of the different chunks, load the data, run the regression models, make the plots. Um, but the final document, once it gets to the end here, it's thinking about it, 89%, it's done. Final document should have a cool table of contents up at the top. There we go. Education and wages fake. Here's the checking assumptions, and here's our two stage, two stage least squares. Cool. Um, that's really neat. So let's do the two stage least squares. So the steps here, we want our first stage. Then we want to generate predictions. And then we want to use predictions. So those are the three things we need to do to do two stage least squares here. So let's do it. Um, we've already run the first stage model, but just we'll put it down here again just because, um, just so it's all in one place. So if we come back up to where we ran the first stage model, here's first stage, come down here, and there's our first stage. Um, so we can run the chunk. We don't actually need to show it yet. We could actually, we don't even need to put it here, but I just am cool. Um, now we want to use that first stage to generate predictions. We want to generate predicted education based on our father's education instrument. So to do this, we'll insert a new chunk. Um, the easiest way to do this is with the augment columns function. So we're going to make a new data set called ed fake predicted. And this is going to be equal to augment columns. And with augment columns, you, fit it, you feed it two different things. You feed it the model, and you feed it the data set that you want to plug into the model. So the model we called first stage. The data set we want to plug in is called ed fake. So now if I run this, you'll notice in the environment panel, I have a second data set called ed fake predicted, which, so this is the original ed fake with just those four columns. If we look at the predicted one, we still have those same four columns, but now we have a column called fitted, called se fit, called residual, hat, sigma, cooks, standard deviations, standard residuals, a whole bunch of stuff here. What we care about the most is this fitted column. That is the predicted education 
based on plugging in father's education into our model, into the first stage. That's the predicted education. This right here is the exogenous part of education. This is the part we want. We've removed the endogeneity um, using the instrument, and this is what is left. So this is what we want to use. So if we come back to the R code, one thing I like to do after using augment columns, I really don't like using dot fitted as the name. That's like not intuitive. And so I'll add a pipe, um, which is command shift M or control shift M. And we'll use the rename function um, so that we can rename um, instead of using fitted, we'll make a new column. Oh, we'll change it to educ hat equals fitted. So we're going to take that fitted column and name it to educ hat. So now if I run it and look at ed fake predicted, there's our education hat. So that's that's the special exogenous only part of education. So now that we have that, we've generated our predictions, we can use the predictions. So we'll add a new chunk here and call this second stage. And we'll set this equal to LM. Um, but here we want our outcome is explained by the exogenous part of the policy or educ hat. And the data set we want to look at is not ed fake because that doesn't have um, the column that we want. We want ed fake predicted because that has education hat. So it's ed fake predicted. And then we want to look at the results of our second stage here. So tidy second stage. So if we run this, there we go. We have our causal effect of education on wages. But this is accurate because we used an instrument to remove the endogeneity that was built into education hat or into education. All we're left with is education hat, which is the exogenous part of education. Um, so how does this compare to kind of a fake naive model? Did we run a naive model? We didn't. Let's run a naive model. Um, so we'll make a new section called compare with naive model. So we'll add a new chunk here and we'll make a model called naive model equals LM. So here we're just going to say wage is explained by education and the data is ed fake. And let's look at the results, tidy naive model. So this is gonna be wrong. This is the correlation is not causation thing. Um, this says that for every year of education you have, your wages goes up by $13 an hour, but that is not true because there is unmeasured confounding. Um, so we want to remove that unmeasured confounding, and we did that through our two-stage least squares. So this is the more accurate effect. We can run a forbidden model too because I gave you the ability column, so let's do that for fun. So forbidden model is LM, so we're going to say um, wage, is explained by education plus, I think I called it ability. Yep, just ability. And then the data is ed fake. Um, again, technically you shouldn't do this because you should do other ways of adjusting, um, like with matching or inverse probability weighting, you shouldn't just control for it, but it's fake data and I know it's linear so we can just control for it because we can in this case. Um, so let's look at the, the results of that. So the forbidden model, we run. And so the true estimate here is 7.767. Um, so how does that compare with our instrument? 7.83, that seems pretty close. Um, let's look at all three of these at the same time so we don't have to keep scrolling up and down. Um, to do that, we'll use the model summary function, which lets us do a side-by-side -side table of different regression models. Um, we haven't loaded that package yet, so I'm going to scroll up to the top. And after library broom, I'm going to say library model summary, and I'll run that line. And then we'll come back down, and now we can use the model summary function. So I'll say model summary, and we feed it a list of models. So we want um, the naive model, what did we call it? I think I just called it naive model, cool. Naive model, we also want the forbidden model. And then what did I, we called it second stage? Yeah, there's second stage. So now if I run this, it should show a side-by-side -side regression table right here. So this shows the same results that we saw before. Um, 
So if you look here, model one, it says the intercept is um, negative 59 with a standard error of 10. If you look back, that's the naive model. If we look back here, there's negative 59 with a standard error of 10. The coefficient should be 13 with a standard error of 0.6. And if we look down at the table, um, it's moving two things simultaneously. Um, that's goofy. Okay, so educate, there's 13 and 0.6, so that is accurate. So what we care about most is the education coefficient. So in our naive model that is wrong, it's $13 effect, but we know that's not correct. In the forbidden model, which we can't actually run because we don't really have this ability column, um, the effect is $7.77 for every year of education. But with the instrument, we get to $7.83, which is pretty close to the true effect. It's definitely not way up here in the $13 world. And so that's pretty cool. Um, so that is how you do manual two-stage least squares regression um, by running, again, we did a first stage. We plugged in the different values of our data set into the first stage to generate a predicted education. And then we use the predicted version of education to estimate the effect of education on earnings. And then that is what gave us the causal effect. And the whole point of doing that was we wanted to use the instrument of father's education to basically split education into the endogenous part and the exogenous part. And we're left with just the exogenous part and that is the causal effect. So that is manual two-stage least squares regression.